what carnivore hunters, um, what is our, one of our main staples on the carnivore diet? If you said bacon, that would be correct. So today we're going to make some homemade bacon. Um, <clears throat> what I have here is a 10 pound uh, piece of uh, belly, pork belly, nice and pink on one side. and a big chunk of fat on the other. So uh, when we're making this, when you, when you uh, let's put the fat side up. Um, <clears throat> you can choose to remove some of this fat. Uh, I like to keep it on uh, because, because you know, on the carnivore diet, you really, you wanna uh, add a lot of fat to your diet, right? So um, what I do instead, let me take this glove off. What I do instead is I, I score the fat. And you don't have to go super deep. And I'm just doing a diagonal motion here. And, and I'm doing this so that you gotta brine this bacon for about a week. Uh, I, you can go anywhere from five to up to, I think you can go up to 10 days even. I typically go about seven. But this will help all the, uh, all the brine soak in through the fat into the meat. And so there we, we have scored out. Oh, and the other thing we want to do, we, so the, as I said, this is 10 and a half pounds. I want to cut it right down the middle. I'm just going to eyeball it. So we're gonna have two five pound uh, pieces of uh, pork belly here. There we go. Um, so for this recipe, I, I, there's all kinds of different ways to make your pork belly and there's, or your bacon. And there's a whole bunch of calculators out there or whatever I just I I made this recipe last time and I have everything pre-measured out um, depending on your other recipes two and a half percent of your brine is going to be whatever the weight of your pork belly is in kilograms so um, you'd have to convert 10 pounds to to kilograms and then divide that by 2.5%, and then 60% of your brine would be salt. Uh, I think another 30% would be brown sugar, and another, and the rest would be maple syrup or something like that. Uh, for this recipe, per five pounds, I'm doing a half cup of water, one eighth cup of brown sugar, one quarter cup of salt and one eighth cup of pepper and a half uh, cup of maple syrup. Um, that doesn't sound too carnivore, does it? it it's, um, there, there are some salt only recipes out there. Um, I just, I, I need the flavor. So this is kind of dirty carnivore. Um, I, I guarantee tea or almost guarantee the bacon you're buying in the store probably has the same ingredients so I, I don't worry about it too much uh, the other thing this is going to be nitrate free um, you if you want to if you don't think you're going to go through your bacon fast enough uh, you might want to look at adding in some nitrates um, that I, I just choose not to um, but I I go through this really fast. Uh, what I wind up doing, let me grab something here. What I wind up doing is vacuum sealing my bacon and uh, let's get a good close up. I put about 10 slices in a, in a vacuum seal and then I throw it all in the freezer and, which is gonna help it last much longer. Um, and I can go through 10 pounds in no time flat. And I'll keep one of these in my refrigerator or sometimes two, I'll keep two in the refrigerator. And as I finish a package, 
while the bacon's cooking, I'll run out to my freezer in the garage. I'll grab one or two more of these, throw them in the refrigerator so they're defrosted by the next day. Um, so let's get to it. I, I pre-mixed one of these. I, so I pre as I said, you want this ingredients kind of exact. Um, so I, I measured out twice uh, just so that um, <clears throat> So that uh, I'm getting exact measurements for each five pound slab. And I mix it up really, really well. This is the tricky part. I've, I've uh, pre-cut a couple of vacuum seal bags. Uh, so let me open this one up. And this is the tricky part because you gotta seal this with all this liquefied brine in the bag and the pork belly. And getting the pork belly in here can be a little tricky too, but once you get it in there, you can, uh, you can get it flattened out so it sits in there really nice. And before I seal this, I'm gonna clean the ceiling area with uh, a paper towel, just so I just so that I get a good seal on it. And man, if you're on carnivore, this is the only way to go. Uh, something to take note of, bacon in, in, around here is going for seven, eight bucks a pound. Um, I picked this up for 41 or $42. So I'm saving, you know, 18, 19 bucks doing it this way. The ingredients, it's pennies on the dollar. So it, you really are saving money. Uh, let me remove this. So I'm gonna whisk this up one more time really quick. And actually, I cut this bag a little long, so I wanna, I think I'm gonna cut just some of this off and let's clean this seal again one more time, or the sealing area. Got that wiped down really well. Okay, now we're gonna take this, give it one more good whisk. You can do this in a Ziploc as well. Um, I like doing it this way because the, the the vacuum seal bags are a little stronger and you're not, I, so far I haven't had any leak out of the, uh, of the, these bags. It, it's possible to puncture, I suppose, and you're, you might lose some, but that hasn't happened to me yet, so. Stand this up and we're going to pour this all in here. All right, because of that maple syrup, it's a little bit thick here. All right, now we're going to seal this. I'm not going to vacuum it. I'm just going to seal it um, because I want to, I want the, the brine to be able to get around the whole slab of, of pork belly. So now I, I try to hold this low so none of the liquid seats out while I'm sealing it. I'm going to stick this in here, make sure I get a good flat surface. Okay. Pop this down, and we're going to seal. All right, there we go. It's done sealing. <clears throat> I like to pull it out and inspect the seal. Um, I don't think, yeah, it's looking pretty good, guys. So now you just kind of want to take this and, and massage it in a little bit. Flip it over, massage it in. So 
after I get both of these sealed, they're going to go into the refrigerator for uh, for a week. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it out in about six seven days. <laughs> um, but while it's in the refrigerator, you want to you want to set a timer on your phone or something so that every day you got to go in and you got to flip this meat just like this. You got to flip it so that all the all the brine settles and soaks through. And so you just want to make sure you're flipping it every day. Um, and yeah, so let's uh, let's get this other one into a bag. Actually, so I pre-measured everything before I started this, and uh, so I have all of my ingredients right here. We have the water. I accidentally put the brown sugar and the pepper <laughs> into one container, so that's two ingredients I just dropped in there. We've got the salt. Uh, a lot of the recipes call for uh, kosher salt. The last couple times I've made this I've used the pink Himalayan salt and it turns out just as well uh, another thing to note too I brought up the nitrates earlier um, so when you don't use the nitrates and I don't know if you could see it when when I showed you my bacon that I already have done it, it tends to turn out not as pink and a little grayer um, that's just cosmetic I, I wouldn't worry about that it turns out just as delicious uh, maybe one of these days we'll do a nitrate versus uh, no nitrate and just do a side-by-side -side comparison. That might be a fun test to do. Uh, here's our syrup. All right, let's get our whisk. There we go. All right, let's inspect, let's inspect this seal. Yeah. That one's that sealed very nicely. So again, we're going to massage that in. Flip it around, massage it in. And I don't think it matters if you start with the fat side down or the fat side up. Um, something else I do before I put these in the refrigerator. I'll take a big cookie sheet to put these in just in case these do decide to pop and make a leak. Um, this will hopefully capture most of everything. Again, that hasn't happened to me, but it could happen. So we're gonna put this in for a week, uh, and then we're gonna throw it on the smoker um, to give it a good smoky applewood flavor. We're gonna use some applewood. And um, yeah, it, it, you guys, if you're not making your own bacon, you're gonna save money, and uh, it's gonna taste a heck of a lot better than the store-bought, and uh, you'll never want store-bought bacon again. So give it, give this a try. I'll see you guys in about a week, and... Uh, Here we go, I just threw it in the refrigerator. I wanted to just give you guys a quick peek at that. Uh, like I said, we're gonna come back every single day and flip this bacon. So uh, we'll see you next week. Hey there, carnivore hunters. So we just pulled the bacon out of the refrigerator. It's been seven days um, and it's it's got a nice pink color added to it. So um, I'm gonna hit pause here in just a second. We're gonna cut these bags open and take these over the sink and rinse them off really well. Okay, here we go, carnivore hunters. We're gonna cut this bag open. And we're going to dump all these juices out. And then we're going to pull the bacon out. And we're going to rinse it really good. I'm going to leave the bag in here so I have something to set the bacon on. But we're just going to rinse this off as, as good as we possibly can. Try to get as much of that pepper off there as you can. Um, you're never going to get it all. Don't worry about it. That's okay. But you just want to get this rinsed off really, really well. And the sink will back up on you if you throw your bag in there like I did. That's okay. I 
had the hot water on. I like to do it with cold water. All right, I'm gonna get this other one cleaned off and and then I'll be right back. Okay, now that we've got the bacon all rinsed off, you wanna take some paper towels and you wanna just pat dry this as good as you can. <clears throat> and something else I wanna point out. So we're gonna place the bacon on these uh, drying racks. So what I like to do is get, get your cookie sheet Put a paper towel liner in there because this is going to help capture some of the extra moisture. And we're going to flip this over. Let's put it over here. And just pat dry it and get it as dry as you can. That's looking pretty good. Now we want to do the same thing with this other bacon. So let's dry out some of that moisture. So we'll get our uh, other pan lined. Get our drying rack. And throw our bacon on. And since I set that wet one on here, I'll just pat this dry. So what we're going to do after we dry this off, we're actually going to throw it in the refrigerator for another 24 hours. And uh, that's going to allow this bacon to form a, a pellicle. Uh, so we're going to let it sit overnight again. And then we're going to throw it on the smoker in the morning. And we'll finish this up. Um, so I've got it all nice and dry. I'll set both of these back in the refrigerator 24 hours and we'll come back and we'll, we'll throw it on the smoker. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey there carnivore hunters. So it's been about 18 hours. I can't go the full 24. I've got a bunch of stuff to get done today, but this is looking really good. Um, I've got the smoker fired up. The lowest my smoker goes is uh, 180. So we're going to smoke this for a couple hours at 180 uh, until we get an internal temperature of about 140 and that'll help kill any uh, bacteria. So, uh, and we're going to put them on the grill, on the drying rack. So um, stand by and I'll show you a picture of that once I have it loaded onto the grill. And by the way, we are using uh, applewood. Uh, so we'll get a nice applewood smoke on here. So, all right, carnivore hunters, here we are on the smoker. Um, so as I said, we're gonna let it get to about 140, 150 internal temp, and that should help with any bacteria. Uh, we'll pull it off the smoker at that point, and then we're gonna let it cool down again, and, uh, and we're gonna start slicing. So uh, s stick with us, and I'll show you that process. Here we are carnivore hunters. Uh, we're at 140, so we're going to go ahead and pull this off. Um, I just wanted you to see the, uh, the bright pink color the smoke added to that. It looks wonderful. So, here we go. Okay, so we pulled the bacon off the smoker, and I put it in the refrigerator uh, to get it nice and cold before I start slicing it up. Uh, my dog thinks we're going to play ball here. Go lay down. Um, Anyways, it's looking really good, guys, if you see all that nice pink color. Um, so I got in a real hurry today. I had a lot of stuff to do, and there was a couple of things I forgot to mention. So before we proceed, I want to go over that stuff really quick. Um, the first thing is you you don't have to smoke this bacon. Once, once you get that pellicle built up, after you've pulled it out of the bag, rinsed it off, and put it in the refrigerator overnight, um, you can be done at that point. You can start slicing it up, bagging it, and putting it in the freezer, ready to go. I just like the added uh, smoky applewood flavor on there, so 
that's what I choose to do. Um, the other thing you can do is uh, once you've got the pellicle build up and before you start cutting it in slices and bagging it, you can slice a little piece off, fry it up really quick and give it a taste test. And if you find that it's too salty, um, you can take a tub of ice water, throw, throw your uh, pork bellies in there, let it soak in um, and it'll kind of dilute the, if it's too salty for you, it'll kind of dilute that flavor a little bit. Uh, try that for a half hour to an hour and, um, and just keep soaking it until it gets to your likeness. Um, so we're going to go ahead and slice all this up. I, I, something, I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of tips on this. Something that I found works very well for me because, because of my slicer, I, I've got, you know, <laughs> limited space on, on how the length of the bacon I can cut. Um, so what I, what I do instead of cutting, you know, the full slice of bacon you might get from the store, I cut them in half pieces. So, okay. So what I, I will do is I will take one of my pork bellies and I'm just going to cut it right down the middle here. And so rather than having a full slice of bacon, you're just going to have half slices. Um, it just, it's quicker and easier from, from what I have found. So, uh, we're just going to eyeball this and get it about halfway. Ooh, this is a pretty fatty piece, but it'll still turn out really well. Uh, and I'm actually going to cut, cut this way now. <clears throat> so that I can fit it on my slicer nice and easy. Um, you can cut all this by hand. Um, I, my uh, eye calibration isn't that good where I'm going to get good consistent uh, thicknesses. So I like to set this up at a thickness and you've got a consistent thickness throughout. Um, so let's just get a couple of pieces cut here really quick. A, a nice thick cut piece of bacon and when we fry that up it's gonna be delicious so I won't bore you guys with cutting the rest of this up I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the rest of this up I'm gonna vacuum seal them in packages of 10 is what I like to do um, and I think I told you before uh, I'll as I pull them out of the refrigerator and use them up while the bacon's cooking I'll run out to the freezer, grab another package, throw it in the refrigerator. So by the time I go back the next day to cook it, it's it's thawed out, and that's that's all. I hope you like this recipe. If if uh, if you try it and you like it, or if there's something different you do, let us know down in the comments. Hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more great recipes, outdoor adventures, and carnivore talk. We'll talk to you all later.